All right, hey guys, this is Nelson Lim and coming to you with more Python tutorial videos today. Well, we have come some way now and we're going to introduce to you the very important list data type today. Now, lists are used in almost every single Python application out there and they are a very powerful way for you to organize as well as remember information in your programs. So I'm going to teach you how to create a list, how to access data in it, how to find if information exists in a list or not, as well as ways to add and delete information from a list. So let's go into the video today. Hi, welcome to this video where we will be talking about Python lists. So what is a list? A list is a sequence of containers that store some information, some sort of data. It's almost like a sequence of car trains. Each car train can contain some sort of cargo or passengers, just like how each container in a list can contain some sort of data. Lists are ordered, which means they have positions that they remember and keep. Position one two, three. And lists keep their positions starting from zero. This position is sometimes also known as an index. We can change the values of lists in place, meaning they are a mutable data type. All right, now that we've learned some basic concepts about lists, let's look at how to define a list. So I may have, for example, defining a list is really as simple as starting with a square bracket and I'll put the value of one followed by a comma. So what would be in the next container of my list, maybe two, comma, three, and I close the brackets with a square bracket and that basically defines a list. And that's a list containing an integer of one, two, and three. We can also store a list into a variable just like any other variables. And in this case, let's define a list of floating values, 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. Close brackets again. And we have a floating list. Obviously, we can print the floating list. And that will return us the list of floats. Now, a very interesting feature about Python list is that it allows mixed data types. So I can say mixed list equals to say a float of 1.0, followed by a string, hello, followed by a integer 2 and then let's also introduce the boolean hit enter and do the same thing now let's print the mixed list and it returns us a list of mixed data types it's not very common that we will create lists of mixed data types it is possible but we tend to create lists of the same data type so it's very easy to process a list now that we've learned how to define a list, let's create a list of DCC apps. It's beginning with Maya, followed by Houdini, and finally, Blender. We will use the inbuilt len function to actually count the number of DCC apps within the DCC apps variable. So we supply our list into the arguments of len and hit enter. And so it tells us we have three entries in our DCC apps list. And the len function is very useful. And I think we've seen it used in previous videos on how to use it to count the number of characters in a string. We can also access the contents of a list simply by going to its index. So if I were to print DCC apps and I provided a square brackets. Within these square brackets are provided the position or otherwise known as the index uh, in this list. And so I'll give it an index of two, close brackets, hit enter. Notice when I provided an index of two, it's returning Blender because lists, remember, count from zero. As with many things in computers and programming languages, we start from zero, one, and then two. Now with many programming languages, there is not really an easy way to see if a certain value is within a list or an array of things. But however, in Python, it is really easy and fun. So if I wanted to know if Houdini 
is amongst the list of DCC apps that I support, for example, say, all I need to use is the in operator. And it's part of the membership operators that we have covered within the string class. Uh, and so it actually works as well with list. So it says, yes, Houdini is in DCC apps. Now we can also check if Cinema 4D is in DCC apps and false, it is not. Well, how about not in? It works in the same way. So is Houdini not in DCC apps? It should return us false because Houdini is in DCC apps. So let's learn to slice some lists. Just like in our previous lesson where we were slicing strings, it is very, very similar. So we go DCC apps, open square bracket, close square bracket. This is where we start defining our slice. We would say, hey, I want to start with the index of one and end right at the end of the list. And so it returns us a list that includes the index one position, Houdini, and ends right at the end of the list. Now keep in mind that this has not changed our original list called DCC apps. It still contains these three values. It actually returns a new list in this case. So other things we could do is we could use the end. The end index is say, okay, minus one. I want to end before the last character. So keep note, with the end index, it ends before the index that you specify. So the result would be it excludes Blender because it ends before Blender. Similarly, we can do DCC apps, begin with the, in the value at index one and end before the value at index two. And that only returns Houdini because it begins at the index value of one, which is Houdini. However, it ends before the, in the index value of two, which is Blender. So it only returns Houdini. So how the end index behaves slightly differently from the starting with index is something a bit of a gotcha, especially for beginners in Python. And I wanted to highlight that and make sure that you are aware of it. So what a travesty that we didn't have Cinema 4D in our list of DCC apps that we support. So let's go ahead and learn how to append. Python list contain a, a method that it knows how to use called append. And so you're able to append say cinema 4D to this list. And it looks like nothing happened here, but now if we print or we simply type DCC apps again, hit enter, we have now cinema 4D appended at the end of the index. Note how append actually changes our variable DCC apps. So just like how we can append, we can also use the method called DCC apps uh, pop to actually pop the last value in a list. So if I were to just say pop, it returns me cinema 40 because cinema 40 is the last value in my list. Let's now take a look at our DCC apps and you'll see that it has modified my list DCC apps and it's removed Cinema 4D from my list. Finally, let's learn how to delete any item on a list. Well, the pop is a useful method, but we don't always want to just remove the last item on a list. So we delete it with the del uh, command. This is a special keyword, so don't use it to name any other variables. And we can say DCC apps. And let's specify the index of the item that we want to delete. Let's say one. And it doesn't seem like it's done anything, but once we check our list one more time, we would see that it has removed the item at index position one on our list, which happens to be Houdini. There are many other useful methods that we can find that are associated with lists. And one of the easiest ways that we can find what are the additional features and functionalities that we could do to a list or a string or any other you know, interesting data type is to use the inbuilt function called dir, dir. You can say it as maybe a directory. So when I specify a list inside directory, it actually returns this 
huge list of things that are associated with the CC app store list. So I can see I can do an append, clear, copy, count, extend, index, insert, pop, reboot. There's a whole lot of this and we won't be able to cover all of it in our short introduction. But don't worry, all of this is available on the Python documentation. Check them out when you need them. I'll definitely include a link to the Python standard documentation for lists in this video. To round out our learning of lists, I wanted to highlight a very, very common error when associated with lists. So I have a list of DCC apps as before. And if I were to specify an index of three, which clearly I have zero, one, two, and I don't have three, what is going to happen? It's actually going to return a traceback. And within that traceback, it says a very helpful message, index error, list index out of range. As beginners in Python, the best thing you can do when you meet with an error is to read it. And it's usually very helpful. So it does tell us here that there is an, it's an index error. And the problem is that the list index is out of range. So the reason is because this index here does not exist. Our list only has an index from zero to two, and it does not contain three. So because of that, this is a very common error that will occur. When we go into the lesson of loops and repetitions, we will start to experience errors like this, where we may be going through and processing through a list and we have gone beyond the index of our list and we experience an index error. So in the lesson of loops and repetitions, we will learn to combine our concepts of lists together with loops and repetitions to create much more powerful applications. All right, we are trying something new this week where we have additional exercises on the blog post for folks who are hungry for more. I will include a link in the description below for those of you who are interested. Okay, question of the day. For you folks who checked out the exercises, I hope you liked it. If you like this format of exercises, definitely let me know in the comments below. But my question is really, if you tried those exercises, did you find the most efficient way to accomplish some of those exercises? If you have, definitely let me know in the comments below and that will benefit most of the other audiences and viewers as well. Now, finally, if you're experiencing any sort of issues, problems, struggles, anything, write in the comments below, let me know. Remember to like these videos as well if you've really enjoyed this Python for the Anxious Artist series. I'll see you next week with more content to help CG practitioners create more, earn more, and live more. See ya.